Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you've joined me today. Today I just have a fun video for you. I was thinking back on the last year, on 2023, and just thinking about some of our favorite things, uh, some of our favorite like physical things that maybe we added to our home this year, or just some of the things that we did this year as a family that were really great um, or that we really enjoyed. And so this entire video is just all about favorite things. I've got my handy dandy list here, but before I get started, I wanted to show you the first favorite thing, which is this adorable vintage quilt jacket that I'm wearing. This was made by my friend Liz, and I will tag her below and you can find her on Instagram. She is making these um, vintage quilt uh, jackets. Um, some are longer, some are shorter. It's, I'm not in a full shot here, but this one goes about to the hips and I just love it. It's so fun. It's like already worn in because it's a vintage quilt. So anyway, definitely check those out. I love unique pieces like that. And so let's get started with some of my favorite things from 2023. First of all, we did a lot of hosting in 2023. We had a lot of friends over for dinners. We had a lot of um, family over for like weekends, long weekends, birthdays, and things like that. And so I just loved that. Like not even, I don't really consider it like entertaining per se because it's nothing fancy. It's nothing over the top, but it's just making sure that we're like setting time aside to just connect. And so that was one of my big highlights of 2023 is just hosting people and having people in our home. And uh, along with that, one of my favorite things that we kind of added to our home this year were some things that just made hosting more special, uh, like these little espresso spoons that I grabbed from Amazon. Uh, we've used them for desserts and just like for coffee hour, if we're just doing like after dinner coffee or an afternoon coffee. Um, they're great for like a little mousse or something like that, like a small dessert super fun. Uh, there's, they come in lots of different colors as well. Uh, also another thing that we added were these really cute little creamers. Um, well they're called creamers, but you could really use them for cream for after dinner coffee. You could use them. I use them for my kids just for like a regular Tuesday morning breakfast. And I fill them with warm maple syrup for their waffles or their pancakes or whatever, French toast. Anything special to have to share with your guests when they come over. So one of our favorite things this year was a trip that we took to Kentucky. So much fun. And we headed to the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. And these were incredible museums. It seems a lot to drive 14 hours or 10 hours, I can't remember now, to a couple of museums, but it was so worth it. I highly recommend it. Our kids are older and I am definitely glad that we went this long of a distance with our kids being older. It's just, there was a lot of information and so it was just, um, I think a little bit easier for them to grasp quite a bit of it. It was just so well done, absolutely incredible. I recommend doing the Creation Museum first and then um, we actually took a day in between the two museums. So we did the Creation Museum one day and then we had a down day where we just kind of explored the area. We went to a historical site and then on the third day, then we went to the Ark Encounter. And I liked the way that we did that just because it was um, when we went then to the Ark Encounter, we really had a good foundation from being at the Creation Museum first. So it was an incredible vacation. We learned so much. Um, it was a really good one too for us because we did um, an entire year almost curriculum of kind of evolution thought versus creation thought. And so they were um, really good books to kind of lead up to this um, field trip, um, massive field trip slash family vacation. Um, anyway, it was a great curriculum and I will link that in the description as well. It was the Answers in Genesis cur um, curriculum from Masterbooks. So we did that all year long and then in the spring we went to the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter and it was one of my favorite memories from the year. 
Okay, so I'm kind of skipping around a little bit. I'm gonna go back to some favorite things, but I'm gonna talk about favorite books right now. So I read a lot of good books this year. Uh, one of, <laughs> I, I like to read a lot of different things, but one, one genre that I just can't give up is my kind of mystery thriller type genre. Problem I have with that genre is it just always seems to be, I mean, not always, but many of them seem to have a lot of language or like unnecessary, like graphic questionable content. So one author that I found, again, through my friend Liz, this is the Liz show today, um, the one that made this um, amazing jacket, my friend Liz Enzer, she, uh, she does all of the book, we do like book reviews every, uh, every issue for a Learning Well journal. And she's always sending me um, just books she thinks I will like besides for the magazine. So she sent me this author named Riley Sager. And I, I think, read three of his books. To be honest, I'm not sure if it's a, fa a female or a male now that I'm thinking about it. Anyway, we'll just go with male. I think it's a guy. Um, anyway, the books were really, really good. I think I read three of them this year and I will link to those below. I don't remember all the titles off the top of my head, but I just remember all three of them were really, really good. And it just didn't, there, there wasn't much, if any, you know, kind of raunchy content at all. So was very excited to discover this author because I do love some good mystery, thriller, whodunit kind of books once in a while. Just Another favorite thing this year was we were able to go and watch Nancy Piercy lecture on a campus this year. And it was really, really fun to get to see her in person. At that point, I had not read any of her books. I had only listened to her on podcasts and listened to her lectures and stuff online. Um, after we went to the lecture way back last February or March, um, I grabbed her book, Love Thy Body, and it it was a kind of a, a slow read. It's a lot of information. There's just a lot to get through. Um, but it is, um, the subtitle is Answering Hard Questions About Life and Sexuality, and it goes into all the things that have really plagued our culture today and all the things that we debate about. She really breaks it down into um, bite-sized pieces. And so it does take a while to get through. It took me a while to get through, but it is such an excellent read. And I highly recommend it, especially if you're just not sure, you know, maybe like how to argue your stance on things or just like why is our culture so insane on these particular issues. So highly recommend Love Thy Body. Okay, the last book I'm going to share is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. I can't believe I've not read this book before. I picked it up many, many years ago from just a vintage store or an antique store or something. And I've always wanted to read it. I love classics typically, but I have never read this. And so I picked it up this fall and I just sailed through it. I absolutely loved it. There were so many moments where um, I just kind of had to stop and think about it. Um, the struggle that she had with her family, um, her dad, um, the girl in the book who... Um, I don't think this is a spoiler, but maybe speed ahead if you uh, don't want a spoiler. I don't think it is, but the book is about Betty Smith's um, childhood is what I understand. She deals a lot with, they're quite poor. Her dad is, struggles with alcohol. Um, her mom is extremely hardworking, but there's just not a lot of love there. Her family is, uh, or nurturing maybe. I think her mom really does love her, but it's just, her mom has a difficult life. So anyway, it is, um, it, it was an excellent book. I highly recommend it. If you're just trying to get more um, classics, I would consider this a classic. Classics into your reading repertoire, I, I highly recommend it. It's um, really easy to read and also would just make you think for a long time after. Okay, if you're a homeschool mom, I almost would bet money that you are totally obsessed with office supplies, notebooks, all the things that you can go find at Staples. So I have one for you today. If that describes you, 
I have absolutely fallen in love with these very thin notebooks. They're not moleskin notebooks. They're just like a craft, <clears throat> craft cover notebook. They are lined. They are lined, but they're really, really thin. And so I have found I use these a lot these days. All of my kids and myself have one in the back of our Bibles just to pull out and to take notes on. Um, also just to journal in. I shared in my last video, um, I use one of these to record goals and journal in uh, and then refer back to throughout the year just to see how my goals are going. Um, I write my good things list in here, which you can see in my next video what I'm talking about there, or my last video, I should say. Um, and also I use, I use one for holiday planning. I have one that's just my Christmas planner, my holiday planner, where I keep track of like gift lists and receipts and all those things. And then I also just started one where I am just writing down home and car notes and I'm just keeping it right in the pen drawer where it's easily accessible. And, uh, I'm just writing down whenever we do something to our house or to our car. Like I just have it split up. Um, half of it's for the house, half of it's for the car. So uh, next week I have a guy coming over to look at our fireplace. So I'm just going to write down the name and number of the company and the cost, what he found, just little notes because I feel like these are things that I lose track of. And then we need another, uh, you know, we need somebody to come and look at the fireplace again. And it's like, who did I use? What was his name? And then have to start the whole thing again. But if I can just go back to my little notebook, I feel like it will be much, much easier. Yesterday, Jared just turned, um, just switched out the battery in my car. It was not charging. And so he just quickly went and um, changed that. So I can like note that in there, you know, note the date note what he did just so we have like kind of a record of what did we do when because I just think it would be um, pretty helpful. I'm really wishing that I would have started this years ago. Maybe many of you do this already and you're like welcome to the party. Anyway here I am at the party of recording important things. Okay and then here's a study that I'm going to show you that was super super helpful to me towards the end of 2023. And um, this was written by my friend Kelly Garms. I'm going to link to her website below. This is a 30-day study on the book of Romans, but she has many, many other resources on her site. I absolutely love this study because it really is more about actually studying the Bible. Um, it's, it's very deep. It gets you into the historical context of the book that you're studying. It gets you um, into really like defining words, figuring out um, the different characters in the book that you're studying and why they were doing what they were doing at that time. And just really actually studying. I feel like so many women's Bible studies are very surfacey, um, very like kind of fluffy. And so that is why I really, really appreciated Kelly's work and discovering Kelly's studies this year because um, they just do such an excellent job. She has it laid out so it's very doable and so that you're actually reading through the book um, several times throughout the month. It's It's meant to be like 30 days, but you could stretch it you could stretch it to longer, but the idea is to read through the specific book quite a few times over the course of that 30 days. And so I think that is so helpful because skipping around, uh, you can really start to take things out of context if you're not careful, but reading a book, you know, from chapter one to the very last chapter over and over and over, you can really see the flow of it and like actually what the author, in this case, Paul, is trying to convey and then thinking about who he's actually writing this epistle to or, you know, what have you, depending on the book and, you know, what the messages are and how that can be applied to our life and um, not making us maybe the center of the Bible study. And I feel like many women's Bible studies seem to tend that to go that way. And um, while, of course, there's always things to apply from scripture reading in our own lives, I think it's also really, really important to actually be studiers of the word um, and not just always looking at, well, what am I getting out of this? And so definitely go check out Kelly's site. She does other, uh, she has other resources as well, not just like monthly st studies. And so I highly recommend checking out her stuff. Okay, and last but not least, if you have thinner hair or finer hair like I do, 
you know like all of the volume products are your friend. And so this is a product that I actually used years ago and I kind of forgot about it and I started buying it again in 2023. And it is just a root booster. It's a powder root booster that you can kind of pump out, um, just kind of divide up your hair and like put it right up into the roots and just rub it in. It just adds like some grit to your hair and it just makes it much more easy to style and gives it a lot more volume. So I definitely recommend that and um, I know it's just like kind of a fun little frivolous thing but if you need a little volume in your hair it does not disappoint. Okay you guys I hope this was just a fun little video for you to maybe discover some of your favorite things um, and maybe what will be your favorite things for the new year and leave me a comment below on if you use any of these items or have read any of these titles or if you've been to the Creation Museum or any of those things. So let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video give me a thumbs up and also subscribe and I will see you in the next one.